All right, Matt. What's your New Year's resolution? Is it to do less cocaine and hookers, or...? Uh, I currently don't have any New Year's resolution. I don't really subscribe to the whole New Year's stuff. Sure. So... Um, you don't just subscribe to like a lot if I'm of gonna, If I want to stop those things, I'm going to stop when I when I damn well please, and not because it's a new year. I got you, man. I mean, it's hard to kick those two things in particular, so I get well, you. Well, I'm not implying that I do those two things. You're just, you know. No, no. I mean, it's a well known fact among your fans and whatnot that this is where yes. Mitimio's YouTube money goes, and I understand. Yes. I mean, if you got just money burden all in your pocket you know where's it gonna go books is where it's going to <laughs> books uh, how like are you buying first editions of lord of the rings what are you buying <laughs> no man? well I, for, i'm not buying that many books but you know when a nice collector's edition book comes out from an author that i like i might uh fork over you know a, a little money for it not like an insane amount of money but you know a little bit sure here and there I would love to see your your yearly expense report on your channel. It's like it's not very high. <laughs> a bowl, a dish, and a bunch of books, and a lot of books. Yeah, the bowl. Getting any new bowls or sticking with those bowls for no, a while? The three bowls are classics. Classics. So, uh, what have you been playing, man? Uh, I, I'll admit I haven't played that much this winter break. Uh, That's fine. You do have kids. Fun. I know. God, they yeah. really get in the way of all my gaming. They really, they really do. Uh, the big game that I've been playing is Tarkov. Uh, lots of Tarkov. And I must say, not to be hyperbolic or anything, but the this may very well be the best state that Tarkov has ever been ever. So um, base game Tarkov or base Tarkov game. Arena? And I played Arena too, which we could talk about later. But okay. that's that's a whole other thing. That's wild that you're because you don't do Tarkov that much, do you? Or no, I play. Yeah. I, I I've tried a couple of wipes. There was one wipe that I really gonna got invested in. It. I got to like level thirty or something, which is mm -hmm. decently in. But then it, I just fell off of it and moved on to other stuff. And I've kind of come back and dip my toes in every once in a while to see what the new wipes will provide. And usually it only lasts a couple of you know a couple of sessions, and then I'm done because it's the same old, same old. But with this wipe, they've changed. Not everything, but everything that actually matters, which is the recoil. Mm. Interesting. So before recoil, so you're playing as a PMC, which is someone who should be able to use weapons, you know, with some efficiency. In the past, you would fire your weapon and, the, and it would literally aim to the sky. So yeah. if you went full auto, you had no attachments at all. You were literally aiming at the sky because your character was basically using like a 50 cal. Uh, yeah. It's video game but, syndrome where they're just yeah. like, we know what recoil is, right? It's it's mm -hmm. it's the craziest thing in the world. Who would design a weapon that's accurate and easy to control? That would be crazy. Well, their standpoint, and I think there, there were some people that defended it. And th I think there will, we'll get to that in a minute, but I think there might be some interesting discussion later on. Maybe they went a little bit too easy on the recoil. Mm -hmm. um, but before, like you would shoot this guy and if you wanted to be able to aim and take someone out, you basically either needed to take him out in that first shot, get lucky, and or have a tricked out loadout. Mm -hmm. So all the attachments, meta meta weapons, and then it actually turned more into a little bit of a laser. So you could you could go full auto and and drop people. Yeah. So now, if you didn't have a good gun, not only were you at a disadvantage from the actual damage output of your crappy gun, but also the mm -hmm. accuracy and ability just to land shots on targets. Well, ma mainly your accuracy. If you had good ammo, ammo is all that matters in Tarkov in terms okay. of damage. So the weapon itself, you could you could literally have, you know, it could have no dust cover. It could have nothing. It could look like a, like a wooden mess. And yeah. if you have the right rounds, it will still punch through that armor and take them out pretty quickly. Yeah. But you're going to have a ton of recoil and you're not going to get uh, those extra shots off with any any sort of accuracy and so what's nice about the new recoil is that like almost every weapon now is relatively viable as long as you have decent aim because you can actually aim sounds crazy at the enemy and hit your shots with some consistency that's kind of amazing that that sounds really attractive Gosh, should I yeah. try Tarkov or am I going to rage? Is it still uh, guy well, camps I mean, and you bush could, kills player who's been... It is, yes. Yeah, and okay. in some cases, there is a, a, the time to kill is even faster because now people are able to head eyes you even easier because yeah. the, the recoils 
reduced. They have added in some new face armor that I've never come across. So there are there will be some things that will hopefully minimize the head eyes action that goes on all the time in that game. Um, but yeah, there is moments where you will just get dropped and it could happen more frequently. But I got to say, it's so nice because before I would play super scared because I had gear fear. And yeah. with gear fear, I, I would be terrified because I even if I had all these terms in the game. I had gear yeah, yeah. fear, head eyes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I know. Head eyes just means they, sh they shot you in the face. I, I figured that was... Why? Anyways. No, I, I I get it, but I don't understand why you need the term head eyes. Where does that come from? So that's what it's... So when you die to someone who shoots in the face, it's called head eyes. So they hit you either in the head or the eyes, and then, you, yeah. So when it will pop up like, oh, they, why they the hit you the eyes. The, like, I, I mean, know. if you I get shot know. in the mouth or the <laughs> nose, it probably is also not good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm assuming, yeah. So the forehead, there's like thorax, probably not great. there's like left arm, okay. right arm. There are different boxes. And they've even overhauled the armor system too now, where, which gets even more complicated. Now you have um, rigs with different um armor plates and stuff like that so you can go in and have like an armor like a level five class armor plate in your front and your back but then on your sides it will be like a level two so it'll be a lot easier for those rounds to get through it has has a can little you bit of protection. manually change that out or if somebody Some recognizes your rig they'll be like oh he's weak on the sides or yes okay they could do that yeah um, there are ones I believe that you will be able to swap out. So you might, I haven't yeah, tested it. It's because like it's, World of Tanks, rare. the FPS. You have to like know kind the of. armor ratings of like different angles on your opponent. Kind yeah. of. Uh, I don't think in the middle of a, you know, combat situation, you're going to really be considering that too much because you'll just be like, oh, I can recognize they've got a big armor piece. Um, I'm going to go for like their legs. And that's mm -hmm. actually something I've been doing is, the you, the ammo is really scarce right now with like decent ammo and so it doesn't punch through much and so if someone does have a class four or class five uh armor rig you're not getting through it and you may not even do any damage it will like literally stop all the damage until you shatter the the protection yeah. and so i just aim at their legs because of the recoil and i just laser them down uh it's it's fun i i've been really enjoying it yeah well, that's pretty, that's wild, man. It's crazy how much they get towards the realistic gunplay with that game. And people, every other game is like, shoot for the chest and head. And Tarkov mm -hmm. is like, shoot for the legs. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear yeah. you. I mean, it's, it's not always just the legs, but it, yeah. is, it is an option and you are making that conscious decision. So for you're why screwed you're if they're looking out of a window, basically, and you can't shoot their legs. Well, you can hit, you can, you can shoot them in the head. So head some eyes. of them, they, they, they might, yeah, head eyes. So they might have a helmet, which could uh, ricochet because your, your ammo sucks, which is also something you have to consider. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you line up up in the head, you'll, you will take them down. I've heard that a lot of these changes and stuff has come to Tarkov arena as well. And mm -hmm. it's better now. Yeah. It'd be worth a try out arena. I think again, because that was, I enjoyed arena for what it was, but the recoil on that was pretty nuts too. Well, and also just like throwing somebody with a Uzi or that crappy little Uzi knockoff versus yeah. somebody with a the Ketter. M4 with a hundred round mag or something. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, okay, this guy's got a little five armor and I've got an Ikea, uh, like makeshift vest vest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Provides no protection. I just and like, that's, uh, yeah. And that's what I'm liking about it is that my, my gear. So gear fear is when you, you don't want to lose, you don't want to die yeah. because you've got so gear you, and you play like a little bitch and then you yeah. die. Which is, which is like, me. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. I've been a lot more confident now because before I knew you that if I went confidence in, back mm -hmm. before I knew if I went against anyone who had decent loot that they would be able to laser me down. So I was always terrified and I always felt like I needed to get the drop on them to be able to compete. But now I was running around with the Keter early game. Granted, everyone was also using pretty terrible weapons too. And just aiming for their head and, you know, blazing them down. It was, it's, it's very satisfying. And it feels like you can finally be competitive even with a, not a meta weapon. Mm -hmm. So it's going to give a lot, give, it's going to give people more a diversity <laughs> and a fighting chance so that you can actually succeed against people, even if they are using the quote-unquote meta. Uh, yeah. They'll still always be a meta, 
but it will i think it's going to spread things out so people can role play a little bit more which has been lacking especially at uh end game it'll be an advantage versus a i'm pretty much going to win this firefight yep. type situation which is i mean <laughs> it seems like an obvious game design decision but for whatever reason tarkov is like has always gone against the grade with people saying what a game should be and they're like now nah, we're just gonna make it real and weird in our well, the thing is, is it system. wasn't even realistic i can kind of yeah. see where they were going with it because it gives you that sense of progression because you start off with just like <laughs> aiming at the sky you know mm -hmm. the recoil is insane yeah, and then you yeah. actually get the better gear and that better gear results so because it's like an rpg it's mm -hmm. it is a looter shooter you are getting stronger in that respect if you have the right loot but gameplay wise it was just yeah. atrocious i think squad is going through a similar thing right now with their recoil where mm -hmm. uh because squad's a very milsim game it attracts a lot of people who know a lot about firearms and then it mm -hmm. has thrown in some pretty extreme recoil for weapons yeah and the community is just like what is this you know i'm trying to I've shoot heard a dude mixed opinions about it yeah well that's the thing is there's always a debate uh people want it for the gameplay other people want it to be realistic and you're mm -hmm. i'm not deep enough in that game to know what the right choice is but i do see the memes where they show like a little kid shooting like a full auto weapon perfectly level and then they like cut to like the game and it's like a soldier just shooting up at the sky can't hit anything and it's like yeah okay. i think it's because they wanted to make it more team-based and you had to rely on teamwork and tactics to be able to push a point and you couldn't just ads really fast like you can in yeah. you know call of duty we don't want to be call of duty and just aim and drop someone 100 meters out with precision they wanted you to take it a little bit slower so i get why they did it but so they yeah. went for the realism in that respect but they sacrificed the realism in terms of the actual way that weapons perform mm -hmm. it's it's going to be the ongoing battle or the till the end of time because as much as we want games to be realistic, you can't simulate real life without all these other factors. And so you just have to like pick and choose in most games and people are going to find issues. Speaking of Call of Duty and um, some of the drama surrounding that game, which has always been like aim assist and whatnot, that, that subject has come over to the finals, which has been doing incredibly well. Mm -hmm. Last I heard they had a, they had a, downloaded it or <laughs> 10 million people had installed the game it's probably wow. like 12 million by now it's probably it's going crazy it's top 10 on steam huge success very excited for them but it's a cross-platform game which means it will be keyboard and mouse versus controller and controller yeah. will get pooped on in that game if it doesn't have aim assist so naturally it has a huge amount of aim assist and that battle has begun to rage as it is becoming yeah. more competitive. Yeah, I did. I did see a couple of videos showcasing the 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 aim assist, and it's it's. I think it's more like snap aim, mm -hmm. where it, I don't know how much it's assisting when you're actually aimed down sight, right. but when you ads, it will just funk right yeah. on, literally just right onto the target. Mm -hmm. And so people are people that are good with a uh, controller will just constantly have it like on ads back so they just keep locking yep. on yep um over and over and over again and it just tracks you yeah it's so annoying it's that classic cod syndrome when you go from playing on pc and you're like well i'm about to round a corner so i should put my weapon up aim down mm -hmm. the sights and then peek because then i will be ready to fire at my target and then you watch right. console players play and they're like they no keep the weapon at your hip Go around the corner, then ADS, and it will snap you to the target. You're like, oh, it's abusing yeah. the game mechanics. Gotcha. What I didn't realize is that there are a lot of Call of Duty pros and people playing at that higher level. I didn't realize that they actually want stick drift. Do you know what stick drift is? I know what stick... Well, it's like when your controller becomes less precise. Correct. So it will actually oh, okay, move yeah, slightly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about because when it moves slightly, it, like it triggers the auto aim system. Mm -hmm. I've seen That's that where wild. Um, there's different systems where if you like, if you're moving slightly, yeah. like your player's moving. So I think yeah. it's it's your actual player movement and not your aim movement. It could be one of the two. I don't know. Yeah, it's one of the two, but it triggers the auto aim. So yep. 
when you're playing and you're like, why isn't my auto aim doing the thing that I see all the pros doing? That's it's, what I was wondering. Exactly. It's because they know how to trigger the auto aim. So it's yep. like this whole stupid meta of basically abusing, abusing the, the mechanics. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It's wild. And I, cause yeah. this, when this debate comes up, a lot of console players will chime in and they'll say like, it's not as crazy as you guys are saying. And it's like, that might be true. But it's because maybe they and it, they just may not realize that mm -hmm. because most players probably are not trying to abuse it to that extent where they're buying controllers specifically that have this little bit of drift, the stick drift, so that auto aim registers all the time more heavily and, and efficiently. Yeah. Because whenever I use a controller, like it's like it's fine. I'm, I'm terrible with the controller, but it never felt it never looks like what I'm seeing when I'm watching these you know yeah. these cracked yeah. out console players well and they keep they train themselves to it and that's like the last thing I, i'd ever want to do playing a game is train myself into some weird nuanced movement system to trigger a mechanic that isn't really supposed to be yeah. triggered it wasn't by design to be triggered that kind of stuff drives me crazy and it, it definitely turns me off from cross play games that are that competitive because yeah. it's just like i hear you i don't I just want the I want my opponent to be dealing with the same challenges I'm dealing with and not dealing with a completely different rule set and way to play. And it just gets yeah. annoying when you're like, well, who's the better player? I who knows, really? They're dealing with tons of auto aim and janky controls and I've got precision but no auto aim and it's just it's all over the map. You just don't know. I do I do like the idea of cross play because for your average casual player yeah. it's great right you're being able to play with your friends cross platform is awesome and and the queue times are so much faster because of it mm -hmm. like significantly faster I remember not even that long ago playing on PC Call of Duty after a couple of weeks those lobbies they dry up and there's not a yeah. lot of people to go against. And so if you like Call of Duty on PC and you wanted to be able to play long term and that was like your game you kind of were out of luck uh, if yeah. you wanted to pull out for, you know, you wanted those fast queue times. So it's nice to have. Yeah. And I would, I'd like to say that eventually we'll get to a point where there will be this nice balance between the two, but I don't think it'll ever, I, I just don't think because of the very nature of yeah. the ergonomics of between the two of them, you'll ever get perfectly balanced. It's possible some company will do it the best and then mm -hmm. they'll set the standard and other companies will try and copy their thing and then they'll also have good but yeah i we're kind of in the we're still sort of in the early era of cross play games if you think about it it hasn't been around that long uh on mass scale so more and more devs are starting to do cross play and they're having to deal with the same problem so yeah yeah maybe in like five years it'll be old hat and they'll all know how to balance it out better maybe they'll mm -hmm. do halo syndrome which is give pc players auto aim also and they'll just be like everybody has auto aim. That. yeah yeah i don't i don't think i want it either it is uh it's interesting but the finals the finals is i mean it's it's always going to pop up so I don't know if the devs are going to do anything about it. I also, really, when I played, I didn't really find myself going against other console players very often, unless unless the people on Steam, because it will show like the icon of like where you're, who, what, what, you know, what platform they're on, and all of them are like Steam. Whenever I look at the scoreboard, mm -hmm. very rarely are they anything else. So unless they're using a controller while playing on PC, I think most people that we were going against were were Steam players. So it may not be like this big plat problem. It might prioritize your own platform. And then every once in a while, you might get some crossover. Yeah, that would be ideal. And I mean, all those algorithms going on in the background, they don't tell mm -hmm. us, you know, they'll, yeah, they'll kind of give us an idea. But I, I do know with the finals, there was a big cry for um, input based matchmaking. And it's like, I could see that mm -hmm. or input preferred matchmaking. I think that's the best way to go because ultimately you don't want to not have an audience to play against. And that was, uh, like you are saying with Call of Duty, it's an issue with yeah. just not having anybody on PC. Have you ever noticed like the PC audience versus console audience, like the game interest is not only wildly different in many cases, but if you go across uh, continents, so American PC gamers and European PC gamers, they're also playing different games too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Europeans will yeah. will will play, especially on PC. Will play a lot of World War games, a lot more. Yeah, 
It drives me crazy because I feel like I have the interests that European PC gamers have. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. American gamers are like, I only play things with an M16, you know? And you're like, what? Like, come on, man. A little southern twang. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, obviously I'm being super culturally insensitive, but uh, <laughs> it, it does annoy me when I'm like, gosh, I just want to hop on some Battlefield 5. And then you're like, there's one American server. And you're like, all right. Yeah, well, it's better than that. I played recently, but yeah, yeah. I, I hear you. I do hear you. But it is, it is a problem. Yeah, it's better than that recently because the game's doing well. But when the mm -hmm. game was actually within its first two year yes. launch cycle. Yeah. You could there you wasn't would very struggle. Many. Yeah, I remember making videos uh talking about like them needing better matchmaking and stuff like that. And I remember there's always European commenters in there that were like, It's easy. What are you talking about? And I'm yeah, just like, Yeah, well I gotta I gotta match instantly. Like, come to America, bro. Nobody everybody's playing Call of Duty over here. <laughs> like I'm yeah. screwed. So what what was the point you were making for um what, Oh, the, the input-based matchmaking? Well, yeah. I think, yeah, I think you were kind of on to it, which is like, it would be nice if it prioritized it, but didn't set a hard rule against never matching keyboard and mouse players against console players. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you just don't do want agree. it. Yeah, as, as popular as the finals is right now, there will likely come a day when it is not quite as popular, and then you don't want to be like sitting in seven, eight-minute cues to find a game then the game yeah. dies right so yeah wanna... like a, like escape from tarkov who would want to sit in a queue for seven to 20 minutes <laughs> mm, did it they fix that better. yet it has gotten better if you're playing as a pmc do you still you have go to in. hit accept on, oh i was thinking of arena do you still no. have to uh arena i think mm. is the same was it, did the, the arena cues get really bad because they were pretty quick when i played they are somewhat quick, but every now and then you would get in a cycle where there was always one or two people that just didn't hit accept. Wouldn't want to hit accept. Like, yep. Dear God, like how many what times am I doing? Here? Yeah, it's so frustrating. What, dude. what did you think of uh, Arena? Did we not talk about this yet? Did we? We we briefly mentioned it uh, off stream. Right. Okay. Okay. So yeah, uh, last podcast it was coming out. I think that day or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I didn't like it at all. Uh, okay. I, okay. Not surprised. I, maybe it's better now because I got a key that when I got into the game, everybody was like sweating <laughs> for the past 20 hours and had tier. I was going up against guys with tier five armor on my first tier, tier of operating. Tier five? Yes. Jesus. Like, I have all these clips. Jason, I put out a YouTube video and, uh, and, um, Jason, one of my subscribers, uh, messaged me and was just like, that was painful to watch because it was just like me sneaking up behind a dude with like the, I don't even know what that crappy little Uzi is, the little Uzi Ketter. knockoff. Ketter. Yeah, that piece of yeah. junk. And I would just be oh, like, it's, it's great now. But okay, I well, fantastic. I would be unloading into them and the dude would like turn <laughs> around and like what two shot doing? me. What I are had, you doing? I had deaths where it says... I shot him 14 times and then it yep. would be like, shot you twice. I was like, mm, so angry. I, like, I'm like the mag I hit with like more than 50% of the damn mag on the guy. And Come that's on. why you would want to go for the legs in that yes, situation. Yeah. Which yeah. Mike, the commenters on YouTube were very um, generous with pointing out, but yeah. My How whole, do you not know the meta of yeah. Tarkov? Even though this is like the first time you played arena. Well, my How whole point you? was like, if this is supposed to be an introductory experience, it is terrible because it doesn't teach right. you shit about the game. It doesn't. So you also, just get in there and you're like, why am I getting smashed on constantly? Uh, oh, you have to aim for the legs. Oh, it's not going to match you against people with equal equipment, which is insane because it's copying uh, the matchmaking system of other games that match you against people with equal equipment. They copied right. it and we're like, well, let's just give this guy the best gun ever, the best armor ever, and this guy the crappiest one. And you're like, okay. So for people that haven't played Tarkov Arena, the way the progression system works is that you have to grind basically classes, and it takes a while to grind. So think something like War World Thunder, of War Tanks or War, War Thunder War or something. Yeah. yeah. So you go against different tiers of of classes so you'll be like like the scout class or something and then we'll start off with pretty terrible loadout with bad armor bad weapon your ammo is not great so you're not gonna be able to punch through like good good armor and then 
you get progressively better and better gear the further you go down in it this takes progression. a while and it takes a long time it takes a long time so you're and like then, how many hours of getting absolutely pooped on by players with tier so five and tier four that's the thing is that you deal once you get yeah, once you get those gears, like that gear, it is more expensive. So if you run out of money, like you can't buy it. Yeah. But like your everything, literally everything, and it was it was more exaggerated because the the recoil hadn't gotten changed in arena. So mm -hmm. like you were actually using weapons that were more accurate because they had better attachments and stuff like that too. Um, but <laughs> there's not a matchmaking, at least to my understanding, uh, a matchmaking system related to your uh, your kit. It's related yeah. to your your skill level so you could come in if you have no if you have no uh, money. money you can't yeah. even buy a good loadout and so everyone at your skill level your tier is going to be like just just yeah. decked out and you're literally not going to be able to take them down it makes uh, me it is, so angry like just thinking yeah. about it i'm like livid because yeah. that's like I, that is like the tarkov that is the embodiment of the tarkov experience but almost worse because you can't run away from a fight <laughs> like you mm -hmm. can't be like oh that guy's got way better gear let me just back the f out and get out of here and i'll live to fight another day this is like well, no you just gotta you, like throw your body at this dude and be like well, when people tell you just like shoot at the legs well it's like what if they're behind cover and all their, that's exposed yeah. is like their head it's like well you could get a you could get a headshot that's true and especially with the new recoil that's more manageable but <laughs> what if the strategy is go for their legs if you're not going to flank off and you're going against someone who's actually competent you're not going to see their legs yeah also uh a lot of the starting gear no optics so Correct. have fun getting Correct. your precise headshots and all that crap with the yeah. the the recoil. Okay, so you said the recoil is better. I will try it with the new recoil, but before mm -hmm. it was like here's your crappy iron sight, insane recoil. And it's like just shoot them in the head. You're like, "How? I get yeah. one shot at the head and then it's just like the side of a barn basically." Yep. <laughs> yeah, so it drives me it drives me absolutely crazy and the matchmaking system is fundamentally designed to not match you against people of the same gear because you choose your kit after it matches after you, you into in. a lobby. So you're like, well, this isn't even designed in any way to, to promote fairness. So I don't right. know or even think that their plan is to try and fix that at any point. I have it's possible no idea. they'll just give everybody good ammo at some point and just be like, yeah, whatever, that's even now, right? But... I mean, World of World of Tanks, World of Warships, uh, War Thunder. Those games wouldn't succeed if every time you, if you got into a little biplane in War Thunder, and some dude in like a in like a Mig twenty nine comes by and like locks yeah, you with done. a missile, like it, that's kind of what it feels like sometimes in Tarkov, where you're just like, I I'm not gonna beat this guy. I can maybe sneak they'll out, maybe yeah. they'll introduce brackets where it's a I don't know how they would do it. But they can either either allow you to make your own loadout, and so it will each each of your like each weapon, each attachment, each piece of gear has a number value. And then if you go up or like you can get like you can reach like a certain threshold, and then you will only fight people that are within that threshold in terms of point value. So if you want to go all, you can create like this crazy decked out loadout. But then you'd also be going against people that are in this crazy decked out loadout. Um, that would be kind of interesting. Or if they just made brackets. For like these loadouts, you're going to be queued with other people that are also around these kind of loadouts. That would, I feel like, be a little bit more balanced and interesting, but it just doesn't feel very well thought out, right? No. At least in its current state. No. People were pointing out how some of the maps were like from the old Battle State games, uh, Contract like a, Wars. Like a one for one? I don't know. I really don't know. I just heard that. I didn't research it. I could be wrong. Okay. Well, but. We Let's, let's not dive too deep into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I just got a very Battlestate gamey feel from it, and I mean that in a bad way. So. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I, did. I want to like Tarkov. I do, but yeah. and I want it to like Arena, but I'm just that mad. I like games that are fair, and yeah. I just like going up against people who are given the same chances well, as me. Well, Tarkov probably isn't the game for you then, because it's just not fair. Yeah, but I also like PUBG, where you could spawn in and not get a good weapon and somebody yeah, else could get a Yeah, but everyone for the weapon. most part is is at that same disadvantage at the yeah. beginning of the match and you do have a chance to be able to Yeah. I hear you though. 
They did add a new quote unquote new newbie map into Tarkov, which is pretty cool. It's it's nice. You're like in the middle of a city and it's relatively easy to navigate and mm-hmm. understand. It's basically like one big one big street and then there's a bunch of buildings on both sides and you can kind of navigate under like underground too. Uh, I like it. Um, but they made it where all all the beginning quests are on that map. So you have everyone queuing hmm. onto that map and there's 12 people and it's a pretty small one. And oh. so it just turns into a meat grinder. <laughs> just a TDM experience yeah, basically. Yeah. And then on top of that, they had this one quest, which I don't, I mean, this is battle state game as a nutshell. They yeah. had this one quest, I think it was called mule or something. Mm-hmm. And you had to get your way into a, like up a staircase into a room and then take an object and then leave. But the thing is, is there was only one entrance to this building through the staircase <laughs> and everyone needed to get that quest to progress on to like the other <sighs> quests in the game so it it like hard locked me i was like on it for like six hours just trying to get in this room because people would then camp it and you would yeah, have player scavs <laughs> who would also camp it knowing that people were going to need to go there yeah and it was just there must like, have been four why? guns pointed at the door from like different angles everywhere yeah. you're just like yeah Seems clear. It's the first guy that runs out just gets gunned down. <laughs> yeah. I had some fun because I would like, I, at first I didn't realize that it was the the hot, the hot spot. Yeah. And so I took out like, you know, two guys. I'm like, damn, I'm cracked right now. And then the third guy around the corner would be like, <laughs> there was yeah. another. Yeah. Uh, but it was, you know, it's, it is fun. It like, I, I, I'm, I'm criticizing it in some respects, but I do like the new map. They added in snow. There is now all, like every map except for a couple, Whoa. there is now snow everywhere. Can the Unity engine down, do snow? I didn't apparently, know. Apparently, and it does it pretty well. <laughs> um, it's dynamic, or not dynamic, but like it looks like the snow is covering objects the way naturally it should. And uh, people make really loud crunching noises when they're running across the street and stuff like that. It changes the environment and how you kind of approach it because now you need to watch out for what's behind you because now uh, the trees are, it's it's winter. And so the trees don't have their, their leaves on them. And so they can see through the trees oh, and the bushes okay. a lot easier. So you can't use it as soft cover anymore. Or not can as you well. track footsteps and stuff like that? No, you can't oh, do that. Bummer. No, that would be really cool though. That yeah. would be neat. And so th- they've they've been like you I could, said, this you is could find even the, with the criticisms the poo and see if it's still warm. You'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Here recently. yeah. Have mm, they added pooping steam. into the game yet? Have they added what? Pooping into the game. No, that would be super scum. unrealistic. Oh, yeah, scum. scum has that. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. At least they, they did at launch. I don't know about now. That's good that they got snow. Uh, speaking <laughs> of snow, there's some cool snow in uh, the road to Vostok. Do you know that game? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's the one. Is it one man developer? One man show. Some. I think he's in Russia or somewhere, um, making this game. It's basically a Tarkov. <laughs> slash stock it's really tarkov but in a stalker um single player experience if that makes sense so i've i've seen a little bit of it and it looks very bare bones super bare bones uh there's a decent reason for that right now in that so the the guy set out a roadmap he's a little behind on his sort of his his goals if you will in terms of when he was expecting to hit them but what happened is um as you may remember, Unity a while ago announced this super mm. cool plan to start charging all of their developers that use their engine, whether you made a game five years ago or made a game uh, last week, it was going to start charging you per install of that game. Um, so, so did he switch to new engine? He switched to Godot or Godot. Uh, even the guys who made the engine don't know how to pronounce it, which is funny. But awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's a free to use game engine and it's kind of the most popular one in terms of an engine that an is alternative. Op- yeah, th- an engine that's totally open source that you can't get sued, you don't owe anybody any money, you can never owe any- anybody any money if you use it. So he ported the whole game over to it. He released a video saying it took him 615 hours <laughs> to port what he had done. Over to the Godot engine. Um, I loaded it up. 615 yeah. hours? I mean, that's that's a couple months worth of work, assuming you're working four-hour weeks, I think. It's a lot. Uh, that's 25 days. Yeah. 
How long how long has he been doing that? <laughs> Seems like a lot. 25, <clears throat> 25, oh, 25 days in terms of if you're working 24 Non-stop. hours. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's I thought that was that's pretty quick, actually. Yeah, that, that's uh, nonstop. That's literally just, <laughs> and then it, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't know how long that actually took him in terms of days, uh, but so it's kind of interesting because Godot is, um, it's mostly used in really, I should have read seven, up on this. 76 work days, so it's okay. not that bad. It's, it's not that bad. Yeah, but if all of that is porting, dude, imagine. No, I, I, I got you. I, your brain trust would me, I, melt. I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's impressive because Godot is a is again totally free to use and open source, and the industry is kind of in a spot right now where it <clears throat> needs a free competitor. Uh, what happened when I was a three D animator many moons ago is uh, the most people in the industry use three D Studio Max or Maya. Then Autodesk, who owns 3D Studio Max, bought Maya, and they're like, "Now we rule the 3D world." Basically, there was a couple. Now, of, yeah. Now it's a monopoly. Essentially, they were kind of the Adobe of 3D. They kind of are the Adobe of 3D development. Okay. Uh, but so, uh, a guy made a program called Blender, which was gaining ah. traction. Totally free to use. Anybody could yeah. get it. Uh, you could contribute to the development and all this stuff. It was really cool. Um, and that finally, back when I was using it, it wasn't that good, but I've been using it a bunch lately and it's very competent. It's, it's very it's good. The, it's like yeah. the, the, the software to use. Yeah. Yes. If you have a game studio, I guarantee they're using you, Blender. they're using Blender unless it's like some, I would imagine even giant corporations like EA use Blender. Some of them are probably still suckered into using 3D Studio Max or something, but like Autodesk charges like two grand a year for a seat. Jesus. Uh, or more, I think, depending on the size of your company. It's wild. Yeah. So Blender, totally free. Anyway, so Blender has really had a huge impact on the industry. It's 30 years old today, I think, um, which is kind of wild. But... Uh, Godot could go down the same path because we've got Unity, we've got Unreal, we've got a couple of little engines here and there on the side, but they all come with strings. Everything has a string attached, and Unity has shown that these companies have a lot more power over these game devs than you think they do. So devs hate it, so they, they're they looking for an alternative. Godot has not really proven itself in bigger game concepts when you see a game built on godot it's usually like a little platformer or like a top-down type uh-huh. game <clears throat> usually simpler um so this guy ported vostok over to it and it looks very competent it's not a gorgeous looking game but it looks very competent for like a solo dev how do they make money um, donations yeah donations okay yeah yeah uh the similar with blender i believe i think they have yeah, kind of I think a you may be right it's pretty wild that a, it's pretty wild that a open source thing like that can get enough revenue through donations to keep keep funding it and keep getting mm-hmm. more, you know, because they need revenue to be able to 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 fund the development of it, right? So there has yeah. to be something coming in. That's I think cool. uh, I think Blender ultimately ended up getting some VC funding, uh, mm-hmm. venture capitalist funding, and that can be cool. Sometimes like big companies like Microsoft will just like throw millions of dollars or something that they're just like. Either this is good for PR or it's something that we believe in as a company and they'll just throw money at it, you know? Yeah. And so yeah. that does happen. I think that's what happened with Blender because it was around for quite a while before it started getting better. And I think a lot of that had to do with some of that VC funding coming in where they could actually nice. get a, a decent team behind it. So Godot is getting a bunch of donations now. It would be fantastic if they got some VC funding and it would just make the market better for indie devs. Not only would it be totally free to use so they don't have to yeah. kick back a little bit to the the game company, but um, Blender's become incredibly powerful. Um, and that that's thanks in large part to the community just making tools for it. So if, mm-hmm. if the community makes tools for Godot, then um, that would be cool. Also, yeah. if I'm if somebody out there is like, it's Godot. I don't care, bro. Like the devs you know, said they don't know. The English language has has worked. We know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think the Vostok thing is interesting. It's not really a playable game yet. It's just a demo. Yeah, I, but I'm not really getting that interested in it. I'm not getting excited for it yet until I actually see yeah. gameplay because right now it's like a dude walking down a street 
into a house and maybe there's like a couple of engagements, but it's very bare bones. And the fact that it's one guy is cool, but I don't really get excited by the notion of just one man working on a, t uh, a game because while I get that there's a lot of passion there and that's exciting because you know all of his creative vision will be well hopefully fulfilled because it's just his vision and there isn't going to be any you know conflict there with yeah. someone else maybe trying to move it in a different direction like that's neat and there's been some really cool games that have been able to come mm -hmm. out like stardew but it also is really hard to do that <laughs> takes really, a long really time and usually if it's a game more ambitious like a shooter shooters yep. just take more work than say a, a sprite based 2d game or something yep uh then you will see a lack in certain quality because it's only one guy because it's like yep. yeah he he at the start was he like i'm do not so doing much. normal maps i'm not doing all this advanced material work because i just don't really have the time and if i have to cut some features that's what i'm cutting so he just straight mm -hmm. up at the start was like i'm not going to have these more advanced materials in the game yeah um, that's just sort of one of the things he was willing to sacrifice to that's always the issue it. i've had with a lot of these more indie fps games because they got these like really cool concepts and ideas but then when you when the rubber hits the road it just there's just not a lot of meat to the game mm -hmm. and it just feels it, it feels like a really basic indie game um i've played a lot of smaller titles like that and they're cool in little bursts but they're not like it's not a thing you're gonna really sink your teeth into long term it's 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 hard to build content. That's why that's why yep. indie games there's a lot more roguelikes in the indie yep. genre because as long Randomizes as you can, it. yeah, as long as you can go from point A to point B and you can build out that content. It's not like a giant MMO open world environment. You can now that that amount of content is accessible to a small team and you can do yeah. it. Yeah. So if they're Speak you're clever, you can make a good game. But yeah. Speaking of roguelikes. Yeah, I had a chance to play a game called Death Must Die. Have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. So it's basically a mashup between Hades, which I know you liked. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a mashup between Hades and uh, Vampire Survivors, where you basically level up. It's it's each you know new run each time, and you get uh, there's like these gods that will show up much like Hades who will talk to you and they've got voice lines and everything. Uh, all the gods are really oh, this hot. This looks just like they Hades, are. sort of slightly different visual style, but yeah. Yeah. It's pixel. Well, it's pixel art. Um, the gods are hot. Perfect. All the gods are hot. Yeah. Every one of them. I'm playing it um, for sure. Yeah. 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 And they, they have like dialogue just like in Hades. They clearly going for that. The voice acting is leaves well, a lot the to amount be desired. Of enemies you fight looks insane. Yeah. So that's the thing is that it's like vampire survivors where really you don't have, you're not pressing attack. Like you, you can, you do, but you've got attack and you've got to dodge that. Those are like the two inputs and you move around. And in vampire survivors, the way you take out enemies is you get pickups and those pickups will have some sort of attack that will fly something out at the enemy and hopefully deal damage and then take them out. And then you upgrade those as you go which allows you by the end to basically be the boss of the arena. There'll yeah. be thousands of things flying at you. And it's similar to that uh, in Death Must Die, but with that little bit of a twist where you are getting these boons from, from gods. Mm. Um, what I liked about it is there's different classes, um, which is also true for Jedi... Uh, not, I keep wanting to say Jedi survivors, <laughs> vampire survivors. Okay. And... There's also armor that you can pick up and there's like different, so you can have like builds. You can go in and I want to try to make a, uh, a crit build or I want to do something that is like really big single target damage or like one big hit damage. And then so I can just wipe the floor with one, one hit or uh, mass AOE. And I'm just, the entire map just becomes a giant fireball. And stuff How like much that. can you play in it versus the game just giving <clears throat> you upgrades and you just have to work with them? You can plan it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, slightly. Like I said, you so you'll get armor, and that armor will have stats on it that will allow you to have a certain play style. And then you can go on in and re-roll when you get to a god. You can re-roll what you find, and uh -huh. then get the hopefully get the thing that you were looking for. Uh, but there is that little sense of randomness, especially at the beginning when you don't have all those great items. So you just kind of have to stick with what you got and hope for the best. Kind of yeah. like what you have to do with Hades, right? Yeah. I like that. I, it's such a good formula. I think those those 
games have kind of mastered the potential of the roguelike where you're just like they're so addicting yeah. I don't know what it is about them it's like there's just my my brain just just like lights on fire it's just like there's mm-hmm. something about it that just goes off with the idea of like oh I just I got the right build the entire map is just getting expl- you know I'm just dunking on everything and then yeah. I and I succeed you the know what I think thing it is, is 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 like you get that action RPG combat that doesn't get stale because you're constantly changing up your build, which is yeah. like in Diablo, you're like, well, I've got my ice orb sorceress and now I'm going to use that for the next 200 hours. Right. Right. <laughs> it doesn't really change much. Yeah. 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 And this is changing constantly. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, the funny thing is, is that it's only a 20 minute map. There's only one map and it, S- same enemies the you know what waves are going to be coming when okay so whole game 20 minutes 20 minutes yeah okay so it's early access and i have played i think 10 12 hours of it so um clearly i enjoy the game it is it's not perfect because of the the only being one map if they had way more maps i think it'd be way better yeah but it just goes to show that there's just something about at least for me there's something about that that gameplay loop yeah. that really, you're not, that really you're not you alone. In. I mean, Hades won game of the year. So mm. didn't it? I'd like something like that. Best mm. indie game, something like I'd that. I probably won best indie game. I think. Yeah. 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 Not, not this year, but it didn't when win it came game of the year though. I don't think. I swear it won something big. It's won like a really big thing. <clears throat> um, yeah. Look it up. Look it up. Let's, let's see if I'm. <clears throat> Has Hades won game of the year? It won game of the year. At the 17th British Academy Games Award. Oh, does that count? <laughs> Do we respect mm. them enough to make that count? Hades wins Game of the Year at 2021 Game Developers Choice Awards. I mean... I mean, the, so that's the thing. It's like everyone has a Game of the Year. Like you could, IGN yeah. has their own Game of the Year. I have my own Game of the Year. And so all these companies can claim that they were the Game of the Year in something, you know? Yeah. I want to see a game that uh, puts Game of the Year, Matimio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, I don't think it, for the, the, the actual Game Awards, though, with Jeff, I don't think it was. Yeah, yeah, it probably went to something a little bit yeah. more studio, corporate, dare I say. Um. Well, also because there's just you know probably another great game came out. Um, yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I don't know. It's all good. It's all good. Did you um get around to watching Rebel Moon at all? No, because everyone said it sucked. You should have watched it anyway. I knew. It su- I read <sighs> all the. Re- I didn't read all the reviews. I just saw the review scores, uh, and I was like, we're watching it anyway. <laughs> Was it was it as bad as everyone said? It was, it was one of those movies that I went into it thinking it was going to be trash, so I enjoyed it because I was like not expecting anything good from it. Uh huh. But um, the art the artwork is fantastic. Like it, it's got a lot of Warhammer forty k vibes. You've How's got, the like, world building? The world building is not bad, to be honest. Um, I thought it had a lot of interesting concepts and ideas. Uh, honestly, it's really just a Warhammer 40k ripoff in so mm. many regards, but that's not mm. a bad thing in a way because okay. everybody wants a cinematic uh, Warhammer 40k movie, right? Like, I, I would love to watch something like that. And this sort of had a lot of vibes around that. But well, Henry Cavill's working on one now. Yeah, man, I'm going to, I'll watch it. We'll see. We'll see how it happens. Cause they're going to try and be really faithful. I would imagine to the, the source material, but, um, it's hard to know how that's going to work in a movie, you know? Well, we'll just have to see. I think, I think it's going to be a show but, or maybe it's a movie. I don't know, but yes, c- continue. Yeah. So rebel moon has some, uh, cool stuff, some really good lore ideas in it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's when it comes to the characters, the decisions they make, (laughs) uh, the plot, essentially. The Uh, slow-mo I hear, is it absolutely excessive? It's excessive. Basically, the tone is set very early. Like, you don't, uh, the first 10 minutes, I was like, this could be really cool. This could be really cool. Then the first action sequence is basically, oh, we're going to have like 90 pound chick beat the crap out of 30 dudes like on her own and they're all like that's doable 
Right, but they don't like give you really a great explanation for why she, she's just a badass. She's got special training. I'm like, okay, nope. like I mean, I don't get. You could put the best Navy SEAL in a barn with like. Uh, anyway, anyway, the the action sequences. The problem. It's a movie, I but I hear yeah. you. The problem I have with it is that the characters all make bad decisions, and they all lead them in into like the worst situations and then they just fight their way out of it and win ah, and ah. i have a hard time respecting any of the characters in the movie because i'm like you guys screwed up horribly you did the dumb thing and now you're surrounded and they all have their guns on you and you're all tied up and you're all screwed and then they're like well what if we just fight and we then just fight win? our way out yeah <laughs> It's um I mean I guess when you always win uh, then it's it's easy. Is it yeah, it's kind of nonsense. They um you're supposed to feel bad for characters when they die, but they only give them like 10 seconds of bear build up. So like, you're just yeah. yeah, they're like, "Hey, my name's Bob." You're like, "Nice to meet you, Bob." He's like, "I am a great <laughs> warrior. You should know me well." <laughs> oh, I died heroically. You're like, "Did you though?" I mean, like Did we you? need yeah. you for like half a second. Come on, man. Yeah. Um I am excited to watch part two. My, uh, I watched it with my wife and we were laughing our asses off because there's like, there's characters, half the characters don't have shirts on in the movie and they're like Ooh. oiled up and Ooh. everybody's like smoking hot basically. Nice. So we're nice. like laughing. There's like some dude and like the intro scene of him is him like hammering like a sword, like of hot steel you know he's like making it he's got no shirt on and just like it's not even sweat it's baby oil at that point where you're just like what on earth is he's like, like a he's like a slip and slide what is the atmospheric composition on this alien planet <laughs> it's more like gelatinous really uh, <laughs> so there's just a lot of just laughable moments and then uh I don't know if you've heard Zach talk about this movie because I I'm very yeah, hit or miss very, with Zach. He's very excited about it. I've heard you know his excitement, but that's about it. Oh yeah, it like blew all the Netflix charts out of the water. I mean, granted, it was the only big release during the holiday season, so it should have. But um, apparently, he's gonna have a director's cut, and he's like, it's like a completely different movie. And I'm like, do not pull the freaking well, yeah. Imagine, what was that? See, Mar that's what I'm gonna wait DC on because every. Yep. Well, yeah, yeah. Justice League? Just the first copy of Justice League sucked. <laughs> like yeah. everybody hated it. Second one was really good. Like I yeah, I enjoyed I it. it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. So I'm like, do not do this. Like, are they doing this to milk the views at this point? Or they're just like, well Probably. I mean, considering it's a streaming service, they don't need to have a director's cut and a normal cut because yeah. it's unless the same it goes to th theatrical release or some crap and i think it know? did technically well no I, I, the, the directors cut if they do that again oh right? that one when it, i got i got you milk yeah. it a second time yeah anyway no, I, um, I i do agree but he said it's got like a lot more uh sex and violence i'm like oh cool so more so boobs and that's gonna yeah. fix it all that's gonna fix the problems of the movie well i i didn't know about any of the rating stuff before it came out but as we're watching i was like is there not blood in this universe because people are getting like impaled things oh. cut off of them but they have bullets that like fire massive slugs that just go so through that's probably, people that probably was going to be in the director's cut then yeah yeah it looked a little weird because i was like this is like everybody's getting chopped up but it's like the pg version of getting chopped up where it's, it's like it's like the jedi yeah. Which I hear is parallels to Star Wars too. It's like Star Wars. It's like a wannabe <laughs> Star Wars. There was um. Well, it, I thought there was going to be laser swords. There aren't really laser swords. There's a chick that has heat up swords. So they get hot. heat up swords. They get, she presses a button and they go and they start glowing, which is very uh -huh. funny because she's in the middle of a melee fight and she's been fighting for like a good minute or two. Mm -hmm. And then she presses the button to turn on the heat. I'm like, why didn't you do that at the start? Cause it's so much cooler. I know they have to have that moment where they like get punched 10 times and then they're like getting up, like wiping the blood and they're like, yeah. now I'm going to press the button. It's it's like, it's <laughs> like when the anime, they take off, yeah. they take, and this is, I mean, I love blue eye samurai, but they had this too, where they take off, they, they take off their, their weighted, you know, mm -hmm. weighted uh, armbands and stuff like that. And it falls to the ground. Like, all right, buddy. Yeah. Now we're, now it's on. 
Now yeah. I'm going to really try. I wasn't trying before, but now I'm going to try. Uh-huh. Yeah. And those yeah. moments are fun. They can be. That I uh, I'll say this about Rebel Moon. It's a fun watch if you go in knowing that it's going to be a lot of silly stupid stuff. And it's visually very pretty. Like uh-huh. I got to hand it to the art department. Like there's crazy looking aliens, there's fun spaceships, there's weird alien planets. They they don't hold back. There's it's not just Star Trek where everybody's got some bumps on their head or something like that. It'd be really you, funny. Yeah. Is if they take the feedback that people had from the the <laughs> from the the theatrical release and then for director's cut, they actually like maybe didn't have so many slow motion sections. <laughs> maybe they adjusted a couple of things along the way. It's like, oh yeah, no, this is it's way better. It's like, yeah, well, yeah, because you changed it. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I'd be down for a better movie. I don't think this one's fixable. Like, it I don't probably know. isn't from the from the description. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's just some scenes where you're just like, I can't everybody's doing dumb stuff like how yeah. are you how do you fix this how does this plot become interesting and deep you know, like it's not it's yeah. i'm i'm <clears throat> worried that the sequel because it seems like it was supposed to be a bigger movie but that it might lead up to something that's more jason in chat says it's not fixable <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it might lead up to basically a seven samurai plot which is a much smaller uh kind of seven samurai it's just seven samurai fighting against the bigger force and then uh-huh. they sort of hold out and it seems like it's going in that direction i don't know if that's how it's going to go but they kind of portray it as like this massive like the imperium is like controlling the galaxy and you're like okay that doesn't sound like a seven samurai finale that sounds like you need to have a giant war or something but it sort yeah. of seems like it's leading to like a weird tiny battle which i'm like i don't totally understand it's, how it's that really fits. hard it's really hard to have especially big sci-fi like that where it's like it's supposed to be individual but something on that scale you know with empires it mm-hmm. would like the the conflict would be epic like yeah. unbelievably epic yeah you'd have an army of a million soldiers right like mm-hmm. like dune there's, there's if you a... saw dune that looked epic and huge and everything was massive and then this is so it's like we're gonna collect a a band of the most badass warriors in the galaxy, and there will be seven of them. Isn't the Imperium like you know billions of battleships? Yeah, don't worry right. about it. These warriors are really good. Okay, right. The the <laughs> uh, one of my favorite book series is Red Rising, and there's mm-hmm. a there's a scene in that, and they describe it where they're coming out of their ships in like these little pods on the onto Mars, and they call it Iron Rain, mm-hmm. and it's just pod like just thousands or millions of pot just descending yeah. upon and it's just like that's like the visual of that in your head is like that's insane right mm-hmm. that's the kind of epic that you would think and expect from from something like that right yeah that's what i was expecting i was expecting yeah. this star wars level fleet battle and land invade yeah just the epic space opera battle they do it. i was expecting something along the lines of the marvel movies if you ever see like uh, mm-hmm. the Aquaman movies where they like have this oh, giant yeah, that had one of the craziest battles at the end. Yeah. It was like super entertaining and insane. You're just like, I don't even know what's happening anymore. People are riding crabs. Like it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> People are riding freaking crabs, man. There's a Kraken. Yeah. I don't See know. Horses. What's ha- mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what was fun about it is they just had no rules, right? They're like, it's Aquaman. What? They can do yeah. whatever we want. You know, Why they're going to ride sharks with freaking laser beams into combat and i thought rebel moon was going to be the same thing where we can do whatever we want so let's have a crazy wild battle and i was like let's let's keep it more um bite-sized i was like okay so while you were watching that i was watching actually good content yes uh on um apple tv i don't i'm gonna sound like a sponsor for apple tv right now no they got some good shows right now slow horses have you seen slow horses no but i want to i'm saving it up for my apple tv subscription okay is that yeah. Gary Oldman? Yes. Man yeah. is incredible. He yeah. is probably one of the best actors. Uh, he's he's amazing. He literally just slips into any role and you forget it's him, mm-hmm. which is, I think, uh, uh, the, the mark of a good actor. You just, you, he completely disappears every time he's on screen. You're like, that's Gary Oldman, but you don't think it because you're like, that's actually, uh, Lam- his name is Lamb. It's like, that's Lamb. There he is. He's just, that's that's the character. Yeah. It's very, very well done. His slow horses, um, is it 
Mafia. What is what is the premise? So it is uh, basically Slow Horses is a group of people that have been they they did something wrong in MI five and they've basically been relegated to the misfits. They're the the people oh, okay. that are still a part of MI five, but they're it's basically like a re- you're not retired, yeah. but you really screwed up and you're pretty much it's like a way to get people to like retire and and, and quit and do something else because uh-huh. it's. You're, yeah, so they're a bunch of misfits. I love that fantastic premise. Yeah, yeah. like we're not gonna fire you, but you're not gonna get the cool assignments anymore. Yeah, you're <laughs> you're doing like the the worst work possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fun. I'll check it out. I've got a bunch of shows queued up for Apple because Apple's been dropping some hot ones lately. Um, I th- they they may they're they're going the HBO route where mm-hmm. they may not have a lot. But the shows that are there are like all really good. I mean, they've and and, and someone whoever's um in charge of greenlighting them must like science fiction because they've got Severance for all mankind, yeah. like like their sci foundation just across the board. How was foundation by the way? I didn't really like the season one, but it's got a season two, and everyone I've heard who actually has watched it all the way through has liked it. Okay. I've read the books, yeah, and so I was expecting it to be more like the books. And which doesn't make any sense because it's literally more like a, a history book where it tells the story of o- over like thousands of years of like yeah. a, this sci-fi empire. And you can't really do that in a story because yeah, it's hard to do because people want characters to relate. Exactly. To. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's basically kind of loosely inspired by okay. the foundation series. I but think I read you... the first book like many, many years ago. So I barely remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a good series. It's, but it, the I, I don't know about the show, but they, but they they have that kind of stuff. They they yeah. they have these really big sci-fi, and they're they're doing a great job. And they're just yeah, it's it's much more like HBO than Netflix, in my opinion, where it's more of quality over quantity. Yeah, especially with Netflix. Good God. Oh yeah, uh, Swifty uh, reminded that yeah, I was also wanting to watch Monarch Legacy of Monsters because. Um, that was getting really good reviews. Mm-hmm. A show about Godzilla. <laughs> is that on a platform? What platform is it on? That's Apple TV. Oh, well. it is actually on Apple. Okay, okay. Yeah. I thought that was only in theaters for some reason. No, yeah, I thought it was a movie at first, and then I was like, wait, it's a show on Apple it's TV? A, wait, it's actually a show? Really? I believe I so, like... yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I was like, man, I was waiting till season two of Severance to re-up my Apple subscription, but I'm like, mm-hmm. I might have to get in a little early, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. Like, Godzilla seems like it's just primed to be a movie forever. So you're like, how are they doing a Godzilla show? Uh, this will be interesting. But yeah, I'll we'll have to check that one out, man. I uh, well, I finished season six of The Crown. If anybody wants something a little royal, no, nope, you met. Nope, you're not nope. into your uh, Victorian era. Not into my royalty. No, you don't want to know. Because how... I'm an American level cab. I don't. I don't go with those royalty. That's the the, the most anti-American possible. Uh, it is kind of, but <clears throat> everybody's kind of obsessed with them. I thought the show was fantastic in general. Oh, good. Yeah, it's like um, I'm not somebody who's particularly obsessed with. English history or Victorian era period pieces. Like I'll, I'll watch them, but yeah, uh, the show kind of goes out on a good note, which is kind nice. of about being a dying breed and the balance between the the king, the the church, and then the government and all that stuff. Um, yeah, kind of okay with it being a dying breed though, because it's a little weird when sure. you really get when you really get down to it. It's a little weird. It is a little weird. Uh, the show puts it into an interesting context where okay. um, it's good. And it's got, uh, I, I started looking up, um, no, OBS says that it disconnected. Looks like it reconnected though. Okay. I think we're good. Um, I started looking up the composer of the show because the, the music is so fantastic. And then mm. I looked him up and he's like done all these major films like over the past five years. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, this yeah. is the new, Makes sense. this is the new John Williams. Like, it's very good. Yeah. It's like, it's like Hans Zimmer. He's, he, he, he made the, like the original soundtrack for the Lion King. It's like, man, this man's been making bangers <laughs> for decades. What the heck? Yeah. Who does the no the Christopher Nolan movies? The like that's Hans Zimmer. yeah, okay, that's Hans Zimmer. Yeah. 
Christopher Nolan movies have been driving me crazy from the audio aspect alone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you watched you. Dunkirk. Did you ever see that one? I did. Yeah. Yeah. That one was just like, come on, man. Just tell me a hard down. time even understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, it's just dive bombing playing. And you're like, I get it. It's dive bombing. I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you immersed, level cap? Yeah, I feel like I'm in the war and like I want to leave. I want to turn it off. I want, I'm going to be holding my knees crying for mama in a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he did that with um, Oppenheimer too. And I was like, this isn't even a, like it's, it is kind of a war movie. It's not but, even an action movie. Yeah. It's, it's about a guy. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, why am I, I have so much anxiety right now. The music is so loud and just, oh my God. Yeah, he needs to tell somebody needs to just like have a talk with him. Like, we know you're like, you know, the premier director of the this generation. You're a big deal. You just made a billion dollar movie, but can we maybe pump the brakes on the audio? Yeah. Oh, it's not even Hans Zimmer and Oppenheimer. He got somebody else. Hans Zimmer was like, I'm down. I'm done with this, man. I can't just keep <laughs> diet turning the volume knob to 11. Okay, uh -huh. Chris, Chris, you're going to have to get somebody else. <laughs> He's like, I'll do it myself. And he turned the volume all the way up. Yeah. Just people doing quantum physics with the volume cranked to 11, bro. Mm hmm. Yeah. That was so besides fun. shows, did you, actually, did you play any games at all? Or were you just completely busy with the kids? Uh, I played a lot of chess with oh. my son, Jeff, who's getting into it. Uh, nice. That's fun. Uh, chess is a solid game. I haven't played it in a long time, but you sort of get back into it. And you're like, I get why this is. It's a classic for a reason. Yeah, this has been around forever. So he's into that. Uh, did some Does Chinese. Does he play games? Yeah, racing games. Racing games right now. Uh, and we play Minecraft Dungeons sometimes. Okay. Uh, I played some Minecraft with him. Minecraft is hard, bro. Like, I got hard? back. Hard? Yeah, I got back into it with him to because he wanted to see Minecraft because everybody at school is into Minecraft. So I was like, okay, I'll boot up Minecraft. I haven't played it in like 10 years or something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was getting my butt kicked by like skeletons. They got bats that attack you now. There's there's more stuff in the game. And <laughs> God, was, you're so old. Well, do you remember that first episode of like the Yogg's cast where they like get... They're like, okay, we're going to try out Minecraft. And then they just like build themselves like a one by one hole in yeah. the ground and like put yeah. a door and like, that's the episode. And it's very, it's kind of classic. <laughs> we, we ended up doing that. I was like, ah, there's like skeletons everywhere and bats are attacking us. Once the sun goes down, dude, that game turns into like warfare into stalker. Okay. It's mm -hmm. craziness. Yeah. So he likes it, but he wants me to play it because it's way too hard for him. And then I'm playing oh. it. I'm like, this is like, hard Go. for me. Yeah. He's like, get some TNT, dad. I'm like, do you know how long it takes to craft TNT? <laughs> we got to go mine yeah, for all these that's elements. Not basic, that's not a basic resource, kiddo. I'm Googling how to do stuff, you know, like there's no, I don't think they tell you how to craft stuff in the game. I think you have to figure it out. You or, have to experiment. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just like, Dang. so I was like, let's just play Minecraft Dungeons. So we're playing that for a while. You should just really get them into Elden Ring. Just get, just jump, just throw them right there in. There we go. There we go. I'm, just bypass yeah. Minecraft straight to Elden Ring. Make him become the the new Elden Lord level cap. I I want to get him into like, believe me, I'm on the. I, it's all about the balance of like, you want him to learn stuff and not get obsessed with video games right away, but I also don't want him to miss out on all the cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. His friend has like a Minecraft server and they're like, you should get in it. I'm like, man, that's a, it's a slippery slope. It is. It's got, I mean, it's good that you're, you are, cause I remember, I, like, I just got completely addicted to video games when I was younger. I didn't want to do anything. I used to go outside mm -hmm. and play outside. You know what outside is level? You can like do all these things out there. I've heard about the, the, or the thing in the sky that's warm and bright. Yeah. Um, yeah. That thing. And then when video games, there, I did have a decent balance, but um, then there was a point where it was just like, I, I, I discovered Dark Age of Camelot and it was like, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. there's nothing there's nothing can compete with this the dopamine drip is just too much why would i ever want to do anything else was dayok your first like i've lost myself in a game type pretty of experience? much yeah 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 
I had too many of those to count. It was just mm-hmm. a problem. I can't count the amount of game releases that I was just like up all night playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember when Ocarina of Time came out and like, yep. I just ins- loaded it up and I didn't stop playing till I beat it. <laughs> I don't know how many hours it was, but That's it was insane, a long dude. Yeah, it was a long time because every dungeon I was just like, I can figure it because it's a puzzle game. It challenges yep. you. I'm like... I'm not gonna let you beat me, game. I'm gonna beat you, and then it I'm was beat just you. like, what do you, "What do you mean you're gonna? Yeah, I'm winning yeah. this." And you're just young, so you can just do that to yourself, and then yeah. whatever. But uh, yeah, too many of those games, man. Too many where I just played endlessly, and I'm like, if he's got, if my boy's got my genes, like it could. This is a door that once it's opened, it will not close. So I mean, this is the same true for like social media. You know, it's like when should kids be allowed to be on social media? Because yeah, it's it's a thing. I think parents are now going to have to consider. Yeah. Well, he asked me to play games all the time, so it's either YouTube or games. He wants to watch mm-hmm. Lego videos on YouTube, or he wants to play racing games because those are the games that I let him play. <laughs> are yeah. racing games for the most part? Yeah. Um, but he asked me all the time. And so it's, it's really just up to me how much I want to pump the brakes on it right now. That's good. I mean, yeah, he's, he's getting way more screen time than I initially envisioned him getting, but he is playing chess now and he's getting good at chess. Like he'll, I'll, I'll just tell him to go outside. Yeah. Oh man. They fight so much, dude. Like we went on a hike yesterday and I think we spent more time trying to get the two kids ready to go and in the car than actually on the hike itself oh no yeah that they love it once we're out there doing stuff but it's just a battle dude it's a it's like go to the bathroom that's a fight uh put on some warm clothes that's a fight put on your shoes that's a fight uh they want a snack before they get in the car they fight over who gets to sit in which seat like it's just insanity it's like 45 minute get ready process yeah dude it's a battle um other parents come over for play dates and then we just sit around and commiserate the whole time. We're like, how long did it take you to get here? Oh yeah. Only, <laughs> only 30 minutes to get them in the car. Wow. That's gotta be a record. Can't you just like pick them up and just put them in the car? I uh, am technically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You mean, they, you mean you have to teach them to be their own person and not just move them around? Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I mean, one of the hardest things in life is getting a three year old dressed when they don't want to get dressed. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm breaking out some wrestling moves from high school. I'm like <laughs> printing the arm down just and just the like, el- just give him the elbow. Yeah. That's not how, elbow. that's not how wrestling works in high school, man. It's not WWE. <laughs> Just go in for the pile drive, you know? Yeah, I just hit him with a chair. I just, just hit him with super, a folding super chair. Just suplex his ass, you know? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And then the kids, they calm down right after I just beat the living yeah, hell out of them. they're yeah. knocked out, yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. No, but it's good. So chess, checkers, Chinese checkers... Uh, I can't, some of the games they make me play, I can't, Candyland, bro, Shoots and Ladders, I want to kill somebody. Shoots and Ladders is the, somebody, whoever made that was just like, people are going to hate this game. Uh Yeah, they're sadistic. So I'm getting very familiar with all the board games of my childhood again. Um, I got recently invited to go to a board game night with another adult, so we'll probably do that. Yeah. Oh, Nice. They're listing off games I've never even heard of. You know, when you go to the board game store and you're just like, who plays these thousands of it's weird games? Yeah, there's a market for it. I'm about to find out. Yeah, cool. So how was your Catan over the this the holiday break? It was fun. Uh, I didn't win, but um, it was good. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, but, yeah. I, so you didn't win. What was your strategy? Win. Where you went for? I didn't really have much strategy. I just, yeah. I just play. I don't. I take it super casually. So I just, you know, Come on, I, you're, I, you're I, a gamer, bro. You gotta I mean, represent. I'm a gamer, but I'm not like going in with like, all right. So I'm gonna take all the stone and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna monopolize it. That's so that how I can you. Then that's get how, the, how I play that shit. Everybody hates me at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I don't have strategies really. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I grew up on risk in my household, mm. and the family was enemies after you just have a game and you're like i'm not talking to you for a day 
<laughs> I hate you. Why are you so? Why are the way? Why are you the way you are? Yeah, I went to um. Let's see. I think this was before I was married when Natalie and I were still dating. We got invited to like a couples board game night thing. Mm. And that was the first time I played Catan. I had never heard mm-hmm. of it before. They had Catan and they're like, let us show you Catan. And I, <laughs> the first game, uh, apparently the couple, I, we didn't know them at all. Like this was like Natalie met them through some weird thing and we were going over to their house to play board games. Cool. You- Cool. Uh, they were very competitive, like really competitive. And mm-hmm. I won the first game of Catan because I was like, oh, you don't, you don't know what competitive is, you know, <laughs> like, and I, I won the game having just learned the rules and they were visually, visibly upset. Like Damn. I could tell. And I was like, we're not getting an invite back here. No, you're These not. These people are hardcore and I just one up them and we are going to like politely leave and it was, we'd never heard from them again. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Made a great impression. Yeah. So they were so competitive. It's surprised that they, they didn't, I mean, it's, there's a lot of randomness to that game. So yeah, I don't, uh, you know, if there was a camera recording the events, I probably wasn't a gracious winner would be my oh, guess no. you're just like suck, suck it, it you noobs suck. this is my Get first wrecked. game you guys are teaching me you guys suck so much yeah no i uh <laughs> if there was a camera it may have picked up a couple i don't know of, how uh, it went but i'm gonna try and uh, tone it down for the for my upcoming board game night um probably for the best yeah yeah i've learned i've learned some lessons over the years like maybe you just, big smack talker uh yeah man me at land parties back in the early 2000s Mm -hmm. yeah there was some there was some trash talking don't get me in a game of unreal tournament man it gets Mm -hmm. wild all right i do like a little bit of friendly uh banter when it comes to you know trash talking with your friends if it's with random people no not never oh yeah yeah. buddies you know yeah i think i kept it i think i kept it relatively kosher but i mean you know me like there's only so many people that could handle me when I'm on a roll. <laughs> There's only, if you can't handle me at my worst, you can't. You don't deserve me at my best. Yeah, yeah, exact. There you go, Jason. Low gravity instagib CTF. Um, facing worlds. You forgot facing worlds. That's the map that everybody played. It was hated that map. Bananas. I actually like the one that um. I forgot what it's called, but it's three towers. They're kind of different heights and it's just jump pads and you jump between the three towers. Uh Uh-huh. That one was like, when I was in the zone, it was just like, forget it. Instagib, just you're, you're locked in high sensitivity mouse back then, bro. It was like, I moved it two inches and you'd like turn around 10 times. It was just. And you're still hitting your shots. Yeah, I don't know. When you're young, man, you just you like just, you just powerhouse. I know I it's don't crazy. Know what it is? Yeah, um, those were those were good times. Yeah, when you're young, you can run around for like hours, and now I I I go for a walk and I'm winded. Yeah. Okay. Jason says Diamond Sword. I don't remember which map Diamond Diamond Sword was. It's been too long. Everybody I didn't even really play that much. So. Yeah, I mean, it got old after a little while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back then, we didn't have anything better. We're like, let's just play Instagib on Unreal Tournament for five hours straight. Forever. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. all you got. Yeah, that was good. That was the last time I um, uh, I was uh, that was like when I was uh playing around with being a game dev in Unreal Engine was like Unreal Tournament era. Oh Somebody, wow! How old were you? I don't know. Uh, what year was the Unreal Tournament? It was. It was. I, I played know. it in high school land parties, so it must have been like. Um, okay, so you you were in like high school though. Yeah, okay. ninety nine, two thousand sounds about right for Unreal Tournament. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotcha. God, yeah. you're so old. I know. Well, they were making a Counter Strike knockoff mod for Unreal Tournament, and I remember building levels for the team for that and i was like i was trying to like make dust in their mod or something like that. nice nice yeah and every now and then i'll run into somebody who's like i played that mod and then i'd be like did you play the map blah 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 and they'll be like i did be like i made it you I played made- you played a thing i made forever ago <laughs> it's yeah. kind of cool yeah i think the mod was called strike force 
It Great died. Name. Many, definitely yeah, not, definitely not generic. It not generic. It stands out from the crowd. You're like, oh, is that like Delta Force, but Ooh, strikey? Strike Force. Strike yeah, Force. That was my favorite map back in the day. Yep. I'm actually getting back into it now, which is uh, I'm following the Godot thing. Oh, cool. Blender. I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing a game jam for the next couple months. So oh, we'll cool. see what happens. We'll see if anything nice. comes from it. Try not to hype it up too much, but I'm a YouTuber by nature, so I'm like, best game it's of the year. Be, it's starting be the right best now. Game it's starting right now. It's gonna be uh, sell 10 million copies. Super and unique. So you never heard of anything like it before. This is I'm gonna Peter Molyneux the promotion of the game. I'm gonna be like, you're gonna fall in love while you play this game. This is gonna redefine gaming as we know it. This is going to be the segue of gaming. Do you remember when they hyped up the segue? Uh, yeah, I do actually. The inventor of the segue, uh, his previous invention, I think, was like the artificial heart, which redefined like holy crap. Yeah, like that changed medical procedures. You know, it was like it was like Nobel Prize winning invention. And then he made and a then, segue. Yeah, and then he was like, my for my next invention, it's going to change life as we know it and people were like <clears throat> what did he, did he invent a teleporter like what is it like this is gonna be crazy dude it's gonna be he, so insane and he made a smooth segue to the segue <laughs> yes yes for people who are not as old as us uh the segue is those little two-wheeled scooters that had the handlebars on them like everybody yep. just drives the the whatever they are now the the cool boards with singular wheels on them yeah. and stuff but there was like the two wheels side by side and then you had a handles and george bush fell off of it and but Didn't yeah really take off i'm yeah they it led to a bunch of like funny little inventions that people will get on christmas or something you know yeah. but <laughs> the hype around it was like this is gonna change the world everybody was getting ready for the for the internet 3.0 to come out. We didn't know what it was. And it was the segue. Uh, Jason says it didn't take off because it was comically expensive. That and also it was essentially a scooter. <laughs> yeah, it was basically, yeah. It was, there's other vehicles that you can use to get from point A to point B. You don't need to. Yeah, there's like those little razors you, that kids ride around. Yeah, you can also, you can also just uh, walk. You could walk, you could take a bicycle. Or you can ride a razor. Uh, like, no. Yep. Would you rather spend tons of money to look like an idiot? It was idiot? like a thousand dollars or more. It was nuts. No, it was more than that. Jason says like it was like a car. It was like crazy. Oh, expensive. Jesus. Yeah. So would you like to spend tons of money to look like an idiot, basically? Because you looked so uncool. I already look like an idiot. I don't need to <laughs> advertise it to everybody. I think we should get segues and meet up for like a collab video. Just do like a high five while we're driving by on a seg. Ooh, we could have a Segway club where you can only be in the club if you have a Segway and then you meet up at a certain location on your Segways and you're like, all right, guys, here's let's the route. Out. We're good. Yeah, let's roll out. Segways, roll out. <laughs> God, we would look so cool. God, they don't look, you don't look cool on them either. No. At all. It's impossible. They it have really those uh, mall cops on Segways and you're just like, uh -huh. oh, you already looked dorky is a mall cop now you're a mall cop on a Segway. you know they got like tight shorts on and you're just like Ugh, man <laughs> <laughs> gotta show off those glutes level tight shorts with their little utility their little mall cop yep. utility belt oh yeah oh yeah like sir sir they circle you on the segue you're like am i under arrest what's happening i don't <laughs> <laughs> am i under arrest jesus yeah yeah man good times though um, I think that's a good spot to wrap up the podcast unless you got Sounds a... good. No, sounds good. All right. All right. Um, what, what kind of amazing advice are you going to give us today, uh, Matt? I was, I don't actually have any advice for you. Uh, I'll have to think of some more. Uh, Whoa, I came New unprepared, Year's. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. My amazing intro joke for this podcast came up with yeah. it on the spot. Didn't have anything prepared it was, either. It was really good. I, I need know. to. I really need to up my game to be able to compete with that intro. I mean, it was it was incredible. So I'll yeah. I'll, I'll try to do better next time around. Okay. Well, hang on. It's 2024. I mean, yeah. 
people need to feel good. We need to feel hyped about going into this new year, Matt. Like, I mean, okay. I was kind of relying on you to, to get me through, to start off on a good note here, you know? Oh, okay. Um, well then in that case, uh, don't rely on other people for your own happiness. Mm, yep. Which that's I right. think is, but that literally it's good advice. And it also relates to what you just said, because you're relying on me to make you feel better. It's per- It's literally perfect. Push everybody away. That's and... not what I said <laughs> at all. Uh, fair no. enough. Don't rely on others, but you can also bring people into your life who make you happy. I'll, I'll add to that. Yes, right. but don't. Okay, don't rely on other people's validation for your own for your own happiness. How about okay. that? Is that okay. better? Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of nuance. You literally just that. asked me to do it on a spot. I told you I didn't have anything, and I tried to come up with something, and now you're complaining. You know what? It's my favorite thing goddamn, to do. And the goddamn podcast level cap. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, support us on Patreon. Subscribe. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this content. Help us beat that YouTube algorithm. And we'll see you next time. Peace out. Bye-bye.